Research and innovation in Futuris. In Europe, at least 20% of our food ends up as waste. While new zero food waste policies are on their way, researchers are imagining ways to turn current food waste mountains into future green energy. And they're testing their dramatic new ideas some 13,000 kilometers apart. The dream was born during one visit here to Vietnam some years ago. We came as simple tourists, and we were astonished to watch the deep, authentic relationship that Vietnamese people have with fish and fishing activities. And we also realized how entrepreneurial Vietnamese people are, how committed they are to hard work, and how much energy they invest when proposed new challenges. And we thought it would be great if we could combine that fishing background and those entrepreneurial skills to both improve the economic situation here and promote renewable energies. And that's how this research project was born. That dream has become a reality at this huge aquaculture factory in the Mekong Delta in South Vietnam. 120 tons of fresh panga are processed here every day. Fishes are filleted, frozen and packed, bound for European and Asian markets. Some 80 tons of fish waste is left behind, turned into fish oil. But that was before scientists at a European Union research project proposed to turn these fish wastes into valuable biodiesel. So here we have fish oil, and I'm adding methanol mixed with an alkaline catalyst. After heating, stirring and mixing, we obtain biodiesel. It's the orange layer that you see floating up here. So in our pilot plant, there we have the fish oil. We pump that fish oil into the reactor where it's heated and stirred. Then we take methanol and mix it with the catalyst and later we add the resulting mix to the fish oil. The final product is repeatedly cleaned with water, the resulting biodiesel is separated and stocked. The plant's design, building and testing is the result of four years of cooperation between European and Vietnamese researchers. At full capacity the plant will be able to produce up to 13 tonnes of biodiesel per day. But the processing plant and its complex cooling system will be monitored online to determine its energy balance. We'll check how much electricity the whole system needs to work. And then we'll check how much biodiesel the plant will produce and how much electricity the generator will be able to transform with that biodiesel. It's our expectation that at full capacity this plant is going to be very efficient from an environmental point of view. The resulting biodiesel could generate up to 150 megawatts per hour daily, enough to power the entire fish factory and also, researchers say, to provide electricity to the surrounding community, very dependent on fishing activities. This pilot biodiesel plant is a good example of technology transfer from Europe to countries here in Asia. Other aquaculture factories here in Vietnam or other countries like Malaysia, China or Indonesia will maybe also install similar green generators in the near future.
It's a win-win situation for everybody. We're recycling energy, eliminating waste, protecting the environment, providing affordable power to our neighbors and creating jobs. And all this will help us to increase our future investments in sustainable development. Food waste related sustainable development has its own specific challenges some 13,000 kilometers from the Mekong Delta. This plant in England transforms around 18 tons of food waste into 2,500 cubic meters of biogases every day. It's mainly methane, which is then used to produce electric power. The process is called anaerobic digestion. Food waste compounds are broken down by microorganisms in the absence of oxygen. The resulting gases are captured, separated and stored. But these scientists from another European research project think the system is still far from efficient. And they are working to improve the procedure to yield more biogas out of the same quantity of food waste and over a prolonged period of time. When we started, people were starting to digest food waste as a, a single material by itself and they were having big problems with the stability of the digesters. <laughs> In the current research, we've been able to work out some quite uh, fundamental scientific um, understandings of what's happening in the digester, which groups of microorganisms are operating and contributing to different metabolic pathways by which the, the food waste is broken down. <laughs> So far, we've identified two concrete micronutrients that can help the anaerobic digestion. These two elements are silicium and cobalt. We've added small doses of both to the bioreactor. Our tests have shown that both elements help to keep the bacteria alive, so the process is able to produce a larger amount of biogas over a longer period of time using the same quantity of food waste. And we can now run digesters, including full-scale commercial plant, at maybe two or three times the loading rate that used to be possible. So for a commercial company, that's great news. You can accept two or three times as much uh, waste in. And if you're being paid for accepting waste, of course, that's good for industry you're producing from the same investment, you're producing two or three times as much gas, two or three times as much energy. It's a much more efficient process. Ah, and for the guys who run the plant, you're relaxed about it. You know the plant is now stable and operating okay, so you can sleep at night. The project is also helping to better identify different food waste habits in different European regions, with some surprising discoveries. We looked at the waste characterisation, so actually um, hand sorting the waste to look at the variety of different um, waste streams that people throw away. 50% by weight of the waste that households throw away are fresh fruit and veg peelings and about 12% of that weight is uneaten fresh fruit and veg. One of the um, most surprising results, certainly in the, in the Ludlow region here, is that 10% um, by weight of the food waste that comes through our doors is tea bags. Researchers conclude that this is significant data to try and improve existing bioreactors, making them better adapted to each European region's food waste habits.